live. Look into the camera and say hi. Don't be rude. <laughs> hey guys, happy 4th of July to all of you celebrating the holiday today. Welcome to Brunch Break Episode 9. Today we are going to be discussing why I no longer celebrate with food. And if that's true, then what do I do at celebrations and social events and holidays and that kind of stuff if I don't celebrate with food? So I'll give you a little backstory on me, Mrs. Love Charge. So my whole life, I always celebrated with food. And let's be honest, it was a lot of junk, a lot of junk food, um, ice cream and cake and cookies and candy and fast food and mozzarella sticks and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and when I say I celebrated with food, I, I really mean like it, it, if any, any situation, any social event, any, anything really, I would make it a celebration so that I could eat. So I would celebrate having a good day. I would celebrate um, it being Tuesday. <laughs> I would celebrate anything. And there's nothing wrong with celebrating those things, but I would always make it about food. It was always about the food. The main part of the celebration wasn't exact, wasn't what I was celebrating. It was so that I could eat junk food. And that was my focus. It wasn't what I was celebrating or where I was or who I was with. It was always the food. Um, and so many times I would go to these celebrations, not talk. I mean, I would, I would be social and talk to people, but really my mind the whole time would be on how can I sneak another cookie without anybody knowing? Like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom again and swing through the kitchen and like grab a cookie and take it to the bathroom. Um, so any of these social events, I was always like plotting what I could do next and how I could get uh, the next junk food, the next piece of cake, like another insert, whatever it is, bag of chips. Like how can I eat more of these chips without people thinking that I, you know, have already had so much? Like are people looking at my plates? Like are people judging me? Like uh, it was always all that kind of stuff. So, um, when I started to transition into the whole food plant-based lifestyle, it was very, it, it became very apparent to me that this is what I was doing. Um, I, I didn't necessarily know that this is what I was doing before. It just always was. I mean, this, I, I was doing stuff like this when I was like seven at like, holidays at grandma's house, like sneaking stuff into the bathroom and eating it and putting things into my pocket and like sneaking away. I don't know how discreet I was at seven years old taking another cupcake, but um, th that's what happened. So I just grew up doing these, doing these things at social events and holidays. And I was always looking forward to these events, to the social events, to the weddings, to the uh, parties because of the food. And so when I began to transition into the whole food plant-based lifestyle and realize my emotional eating problems, my closet eating problems, my overeating problems, my addiction to junk food and fast food, um, once I started to realize that, I was like, oh shit, I, uh, I, I have some, some work to do. And I became more present with what I was doing, what I was eating, where I was, why I was eating things, you know, because... It, it, it took a lot for me to become really present with the foods I was eating because I would turn off a switch and eat an entire bag of chocolate donuts at two in the morning, like watching The Bachelorette or whatever. So it was a lot for me to um, really come to terms with what I, what I was actually doing and what I needed to change. And so... In my journey, in my transformation, and as I was becoming more, more, you know, mentally presently aware of what I was doing, um, that really helped me realize that I needed to shift from being excited about the food at the events and start to really focus on what we were celebrating or why we were getting together and the people I was going to be around, you know. And this does not mean that you can't eat food at these social events. So although I don't celebrate with food anymore, I can celebrate and eat food. Does that make sense? Like I'm not making food the center of the celebration. I'm not making food the focus and the only thing that I'm thinking about and doing and worrying about. 
Um, that's not the focus. The focus is on the people, the event, the holiday, the reason that we're there. And I started to get so much more out of uh, these events, like per personally, like like um, so much more, um, you know, deep down out of these events when I really started to connect with the people instead of just eating the entire uh, thing of spinach artichoke dip you know, or whatever it was. Say hello, Nug. He likes to hang out when I'm on brunch breaks. Um, so I really started to focus more on the people, focus more on why I was there. And I would bring food and I would eat food, absolutely, still um, at the events. But it wasn't the focus anymore. It wasn't why I was there. And um, it just became a lot more relaxing once I didn't have to think about food all the time. So what do I do at social events now as far as food? Well, I'll tell you this much. I always bring my own food to social events because there's usually, it depends where I'm going, uh, but generally there's really not a lot for me um, unless I bring it myself. Um, you know, there's a lot of cookies, a lot of chips, a lot of, um, dishes that I just don't want to um, have anymore because they do not align with my goals. They don't align with my nutritional values, right? So what do I bring? I always bring stuff to share. And I didn't used to do this at first. When I first transitioned, I would always bring my own food and like just for me. And a little while into that, I'm like, I need to bring, you know, some stuff to share because A, people would either look at me and be like, okay, she's got her own food, which I really didn't care. But B, because people are like wanting to try my food, like, oh, what's that? Like, can I have some? And then I, I'd share my food and then I'd be left with like nothing. So what I do now is I bring enough to share and I also bring enough so that I know I'm taken care of. So what I'll usually do is bring like a big cold and uh, a big cold bean and veggie salad, which I'm going to show you here today. I made one. Uh, a couple days ago, and uh, this is all that's left. It was a, a really big bowl. But, um, so let me show you this here. Look at those beautiful colors. Oh my gosh, someone's sending me tons of hearts. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Um, so in this salad is um, a ton of awesome goodness. I'll just quickly list what's in it. So we have uh, chickpeas uh, for the bean, and then a ton of vegetables, zucchini, cucumber, broccoli slaw, Carrots, onions, garlic, green onions, cooked sweet potatoes, tomatoes, um, green pepper. I think that's it. And then I have um, white vinegar, balsamic vinegar, lemon juice as like the dressing. Um, oh, there's avocado in here too. I added avocado. And then um, I think that's it. Sometimes I add some seasonings like a paprika or a salt-free seasoning or something like that. But um and the sweet potatoes, I normally don't put sweet potatoes in my cold bean and veggie salad, but um, I did for, oh, chickpea on my computer. <laughs> Runaway chickpea. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, oh, I don't normally put cooked sweet potatoes in my, uh, in my dish, in my cold bean and veggie salad dish, but I had some cooked um, sweet potato wedges uh, left over from what I didn't eat, you know, the day before, and so I just cut those up and put those in there. Just wiping off my computer from all the chickpea juice with my pineapple napkin. You guys, I got these at Bed Bath & Beyond. Aren't they cute? Um, so I'll always bring a cold bean and veggie salad to share with everybody. And I usually bring myself a separate bowl that's usually about the same size as the bowl that I share, let's be honest. Um, but that way I know I'm taken care of. So I can put out one bowl to share with everybody and then the other bowl, that's for me. <laughs> like, I'm going to eat all of that. <laughs> And then I usually bring like um, either fruit or sometimes like a pan of black bean brownies if I had time to make those. But um, I cut up some watermelon yesterday into nice um, uh, pieces, just like bite, not bite size, I guess, but like um, um, finger food pieces, you know, and just keep the edges on them so they can sit up in a bowl. They're not really sit up in this bowl, but they can sit up and then people can just grab them. So usually like a big bowl of fruit, especially in the summer, like I'll bring a big bowl of fruit and stuff. Um, and then I usually bring tea bags um, for uh, to add to water bottles or something for uh, my drink. 
So while I'm not celebrating with the food, I can still be at a celebration, focus on why I'm there, on the people, on the conversation, and enjoy food on the side and not make it the focus. So I hope this helped um, on your holiday 4th of July. I wish you guys all a very safe and very happy 4th of July today. If you are celebrating, please be safe. And, um, oh, I wanted to mention, too, so we opened the doors yesterday to NutriBabe Nation, our monthly membership site, and we are almost at 30 people so far in NutriBabe Nation, and I am just so excited to be a continued part of of these people's journey and to be a close part, uh, guidance, support for them, and to create a community that is, uh, you know, so supportive and so... Um, close-knit and be able to really be a close part of their journey. So if you are wanting to join NutriBabe Nation, you want this extra support, you want guidance, you want courses, you want a closed community, uh, you want a go-to coach, me, every single day in your back pocket, the NutriBabe Nation is for you. I'll put the link down below so that you guys can join. The doors are open now and we are running a special launch intro price of only $39 a month and this will be the lowest price that you will see. So if this is speaking to you, if what I say resonates you, with you and uh, you you love what I put out, then NutriBabe Nation is for you because brunch breaks are just skimming the surface of what I all provide in NutriBabe Nation for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them below, but otherwise head to NutriBabeNation.com and lock in at the special intro price of $39 a month and uh, we will see you in the nation. That's at NutriBabeNation.com and I'll put the link below. Happy fourth guys and we'll see you next week.